All right, in, in this example, we're going to take a look at how to solve a circuit like this um, using a phaser. Don't be too stunned. Phasers are not as complicated as they might initially seem. A couple of things that you want to keep in mind. You've got to have a good eye for or mind for thinking about trig. You need to brush up on... Um, uh, complex numbers and you need to understand essentially uh, what a trigonometric function is telling you. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of things. First of all, phasers require uh, a sinusoidal input. Okay, that's the that's the nature of them. Um, and They'll, when you convert them into phasor form, you'll end up with something that looks like this, where the number on the left is the amplitude and the uh, number on the right is a phase shift. Rather than working on a traditional Cartesian plane, we're, we're going to use the um, uh, uh, complex plane, where the x-axis is real and the y-axis is imaginary. You're going to want to have these values memorized. These are the impedance values. Notice that they are all ohmic in their units. And that's going to enable us to treat this uh, as if it were a uh, simple resistive circuit. So we'll be able to combine and uh, uh, combine resistors and use source transformation, nodal analysis, mesh, uh, all of those different methods to solve our problem. Um, you'll want to have this memorized. A cosine, I guess we call it x of t plus, you know, n degrees. This is amplitude. This is your frequency. Or it's going to be in. Uh, radians per second. And then this is your um, phase shift. Okay. Um, so when we are going to solve a phaser problem, we're going to use these steps. First, we'll rewrite the source into a phaser form. We'll calculate the impedances. Then we'll redraw the circuit in the frequency domain. So we'll move it out of the time domain. And then we can solve for our unknowns using any method that we've used uh, prior to this. And then finally, when we're done, we'll return the solution into the time domain. Okay. In this example, I'm going to solve this problem using Mathematica, but uh, maybe in another video I can do it using uh, a calculator and show you how the calculator can be used to solve these problems. Really, uh, they're, they're fairly straightforward. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate, we want to uh, convert our source into a phaser. So if I of t equals the cosine of 2500t minus 45 degrees, then our amplitude is 1 and our phase shift is negative 45 degrees. So our phaser then uh, is 1 at an angle of negative 45 degrees. Now I'm also going to go ahead and write this in a um, in complex form which means that I'll just think about this thing on the complex plane, right? It's a, it's a magnitude of 1 and an angle of negative 45 degrees. So uh, it looks like this, where this is 1. So that means then that our uh, real component is the square root of 2 over 2. And our imaginary component is the square root of 2 over 2, negative. Okay. And that's going to be useful for my approach to this problem in just a moment.
So square root of 2 over 2 uh, minus the square root of 2 over 2 j. Okay, now we want to write our um, components into, uh, convert our components into impedances. So z of r is simply 10 ohms. And z of c, remember, uses the formula 1 over j omega c. One thing that I tend to do with these as I'm solving them is I'll just move the j upstairs uh, because remember this thing needs to be written into a standard form. We can't have j in the denominator uh, to leave it in standard form. So um, convince yourself that 1 over j is equal to negative j. Simply like this, 1 over j. If I wanted to put that into a standard form, I'd have to multiply it by j over j, I'd get uh, j over negative 1 or negative j. Okay, so this is negative j times 1 over omega c, which is negative j times 1 over omega, this is omega right here, 2500 times 20 times 10 to the negative 6 for 20 microfarads. And if you work that out, you'll find that this is minus uh, 20j. Okay, so now we have our impedances uh, and we have our phaser, so we can redraw the circuit in uh, the frequency domain. So I'll redraw it here. This is uh, the square root of 2 over 2 minus the square root of 2 over 2 j. This is minus 20 j. And this is 10 ohms. Remember that this is also in ohms. So now we have a really simple linear circuit and we can use any method at all. So just to prove that, um, it would be really simple to solve this by doing a source transformation. We've got a, a current source and a resistor, essentially, in parallel. So let's convert them into a voltage source and a resistor in uh, series and then we can just do voltage division to find this voltage, which is what we're looking for. Okay, V across here. Okay, so to do a, a voltage, a source transformation, we are going to multiply this current times this resistance or impedance, and um, and that will give us the voltage source. So let's just redraw the circuit, and then we'll calculate the values. Okay, I'm going to go over and do this in Mathematica. And here is the equation. This is the current, and this is the impedance. Okay, if you're not familiar with some of this stuff in Mathematica, this uh, I stands for the complex number I, and you can get it by um, typing escape two lowercase i's and then escape again. You can also use a capital I, and it works just the same. Okay, um, and then the forward slash forward slash n gives us a, um, a numerical value. So when I compute that, I get this for my voltage. Okay, so that's negative 14.14, negative 14.14. So this is negative 14.14 minus 14.14 I, or I'm sorry, J. And then this is still negative 20 J ohms. 
Okay, so now I have a simple circuit with two, um, essentially two resistors that are in series, and I can just use voltage division here. So V equals 14.14, that's uh, negative 14.14, minus 14.14 J volts times 10 over 10 minus 20 J. Okay, so I'll come over into Mathematica and just plot, plug that in really quickly. So I'll just take this and copy it. And I'm going to put it in parentheses because I want to multiply the in, this entire expression times 10. Uh, this is control forward slash to make a stacked fraction. 10 minus 20 i. Okay, And when I calculate that, I get this value here. So I have V equals minus 2.82. Uh, oops, let me just check that again. I'm sorry, 2.82 minus 8.49. Now it's important to remember that this is in complex form. Remember how we converted from the time domain to the frequency domain. We had um, our original phasor form used um, the amplitude and the phase shift for a given vector. Okay, If we move this out of the time domain here, this would just be a simple vector. It would be 1 at cosine 45, right? Or we could kind of think of it as a vector anyway. So we need to convert this back into a vector. Um, on a calculator, you can do it by um, simply finding the, mag the magnitude of this, the length of the um, vector formed by this. And then you can take the inverse tangent of the uh, com complex value over the real value to get the uh, the angle. I'm just going to do it really quickly in Mathematica by taking this value here and copying it into this little piece of code that I've written. Okay, And this is just something I have saved in a file and I just open it up so I don't ever have to try and remember how it works. This little piece of code is going to give me two answers. The first one will be the magnitude and the second one will be the angle. Okay, So there we go. I have 8.94 at an angle of negative 71.57. So that's 8.95 at an angle of negative 71.57. So to convert that back into the time domain, I'm just going to simply use the original equation and just change the amplitude and the phase shift. So my final answer then is that V of T equals 8.95 cosine of 2500 T minus 71.57. Okay, and basically all of these problems work in a very similar fashion. Good luck.